one of the most organized criminal networks in the country. The cattle smuggling mafia. How does it operate? Who are the partners in the crime? Experts, security analysts and animal rights activists speak on the impossible scale of cattle trafficking in India and the threat it poses to national security in special report today. Horrifying images like this have kept the animal lovers busy petitioning the courts and the government. Finally, they have caught the attention of the Home Ministry's Standing Committee in a report submitted to Parliament on April 11, 2017. The committee recognised the horrific crimes across the Indo-Bangladesh border and the cattle mafia's nexus with the police. The over 4,000 kilometres long India-Bangladesh border is famous for smuggling of arms, ammunition, explosives, drugs and most of all, cattle. About 70 lakh cattle are smuggled into Bangladesh from India every year for the purpose of slaughter. They are taken from 17 states throughout the country, but most of all through Odisha. They are transported illegally through national and state highways day and night. The cattle are cruelly stuffed in pickup vans, trucks, containers, trains. Even milk vans and emptied out luxury buses are used. They are walked hundreds of kilometres from remote villages all over the country before they reach West Bengal, all in violation of the animal welfare laws and state anti-cow slaughter laws. Cattle are traded in large numbers, mostly from markets in states of Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, among others. They are taken through exit points in Bihar, West Bengal and Assam to Bangladesh. Trillions of rupees generated by cattle smuggling fund terrorist outfits. The cattle mafia is among the most serious threats to national security because of its links with terrorist outfits. A fact that has been acknowledged by security forces and official agencies and highlighted repeatedly through media reports over the last 20 years. Almost every day, full load of the trains after trains was being transported to the Bangladesh border up to 14 to 15,000 cows every day they were being getting smuggled into Bangladesh. In fact, Bangladesh economy was surviving and thriving on our cow smuggling. The Standing Committee on Home Affairs tabled a report titled Border Security, Capacity Building and Institutions last month in Rajya Sabha and reiterated the concerns expressed by security analysts and the NGOs working on the ground. It recognised cattle smuggling across the West Bengal border as a crime of serious proportions and suggested measures to check the crime. Among its many observations, the committee noted that there were not enough floodlights along several stretches on the Indo-Bangladesh border and that the West Bengal state government failed to implement its own order of September 2003 that disallowed any animal hearts or cattle markets within an area of 8 kilometres along the border. The West Bengal government, which is perhaps lacking in giving the required support to government of India, to our security forces on the border, and it is creating a lot of problem. And that is why we have not been able to completely stop the smuggling, whether it is cattle smuggling or whether other kinds of the smuggling. It also suggested that mass movement and trading of cattle should be prohibited within 15 kilometres of the border. It further noted that the auction of seized cattle by customs officials is misused by cattle smugglers who keep buying the auctioned cattle again and again. Whatever is being seized, these cattle are being given to customs and customs, they auction it to more or less the same cattle smugglers. And you can see that for five or six times, the same cattle they are being smuggled, they are being seized and they are being auctioned to the same smuggler and at last it reaches Bangladesh. 
The committee therefore suggested mandatory submission of Aadhaar and PAN card details by cattle auctioneers while bidding. The committee recommended that fencing projects should be prioritised and the ministry must increase the deployment of forces and intensify round-the-clock surveillance. While the committee agreed that the mass movement of cattle occurs from all states towards West Bengal and Assam, it also felt that the police forces of various states have failed to stop this crime and acknowledged the existence of a wide and deeply entrenched nexus due to which this menace has proliferated. India and Bangladesh share a 4,096 kilometers long international border, which is the fifth longest land border in the world. Nearly 500 kilometers of over 2,200 kilometers border that runs along West Bengal is riverine, which is a major challenge for the security forces. We do not have actual fencing. We cannot have so many boats that we go inside the boat and drag the cattle. So mostly they come to border areas and they are being pushed to rivers like Brahmaputra, Mahananda and all these rivers which are flowing to Bangladesh. 25% of the cattle they die and 75%, 70% the rich Bangladesh, those who die, their skins are being removed. Yet they are profitable also. They don't bother even if they lose 50% of, the, of their cattle, they die in this process. Not only the riverine part, unfortunately for, for the last about few years, more than 200, if I remember correctly, than 260 kilometer of the fencing, it has been broken. Government of India has sanctioned the fund, but there was a major problem in acquiring the land by the West Bengal government, and we did not find any enthusiasm or any active support coming from the West Bengal government on this front. BJP MP from Uttar Pradesh and a former top cop Dr. Satyapal Singh, who is also a member of the Home Ministry Standing Committee, emphasizes the need of laser and radar technology to track any illegal activity on the border. Laser technology, we have the radar technology, and I'm sure though manual development is also very, very important, but especially as the riverine, uh, this, uh, our territory is there, it is very difficult to have the manual deployment and we have to depend on this technology. But that is no obstacle for the smugglers working in connivance with the police. The border security force is the only physical barrier in the process. <laughs> Former Additional Director General of Border Security Force, Pravas Kumar Mishra believes that the UPA government order of 2012, which disallowed the BSF to use lethal weapons against smugglers, encouraged the crime. Before 2014, the MHA was silent over the matter. They never desired that effectively to stop cattle smuggling by BSF in the border. That created a lot of panic for and demoralization to BSF troops because a lot of BSF constables were also injured by cattle smugglers and they were get out and they couldn't take any action against them. The Home Ministry under the NDA government in 2014 gave clear instructions to the BSF to act against smugglers. The BSF maintains that it has been able to control the smuggling in the last three years. Interestingly, according to the border security forces, Nearly 10 to 20 lakhs of cattle were smuggled to Bangladesh from India every year, which was much below the West Bengal government's own estimates of 60 lakhs. The alarming scale of the crime prompted a petition in the Supreme Court from animal rights groups, in response to which the court asked the government in 2014 to take serious measures to check the crime. The government set up a subcommittee under the Home Ministry, which involved key players like Animal Welfare Board of India, the Ministries of Road Transport, Environment and Forest, representatives of 17 states from where cattle is smuggled to Bangladesh, along with the representatives of the BSF and state police. The only group which did not take part in the discussion was the National Highway Authorities. I can well tell you that is the only department for which we are facing problem for cattle smuggling to Bangladesh.
because on national highway they are not being seized at all but not yeah. only the yeah. cattle it is the trucks also to be seized so that uh, there should be uh, no economical financial loss to this cattle smuggler the subcommittee has been having regular meetings to address the issue people working on the ground feel that the home ministry subcommittee has done a lot but its scope needs to be expanded they have done a good job uh, had they not uh, set up this committee there would have been no awareness about this crime now it involves n number of other ministries the animal welfare board of india which comes under the environment ministry the commerce ministry the transport ministry and the railways animal welfare activists doing extensive work in the routes leading up to west bengal believe that some of the main smuggling corridors like odisha are doing precious little to address the crime jagpreet lutra who is an honorary animal welfare officer and spokesperson of the delhi based ngo gaugyan foundation has done extensive cattle protection work from the road to the courts in five states most of all in odisha in the last 5 years she says that the trafficking of cattle for the purpose of slaughter begins in the illegal cattle markets all over the country and ends at the indo bangladesh border please understand it's a border and how do such a large number of cattle reach the border this is what the home ministry subcommittee needs to address instead of putting the entire onus on the government of west bengal or on the border security force the home ministry needs to understand that the national and state highways they are choked with cattle smugglers day in and day out for years on end what is the home ministry subcommittee doing to address that cattle they go free on national highway none of the states including odisha or bengal or bihar and up they ever try to seize this cattle while being transported by trucks on national highway that is the problem they reach quite easily up to the embossing at the debossing point just 3 kilometers or 5 kilometers belt of border activists working on the ground experience the brute power of mafia and the police who are hand in glove with the cattle mafia make things worse even when activists give precise information about the movement of smuggler trucks no action is taken by the police odisha is the smugglers corridor number 1 in the country Traf uh, uh, cattle traffickers from four states that is telangana andhra jharkhand and chatisgarh they all go via the nh5 which is in odisha or nh6 which is again in odisha the entire trafficking is happening only because of the connivance of the police if the police want 200 trucks will go if they don't want not a single truck can go the nh5 and nh6 passing through odisha are the two main supply lines to west bengal cattle smuggled from telangana andhra pradesh jharkhand and chatisgarh converge in balasore district of odisha through these routes and are then transported to west bengal i have stood there 400 days and nights in the last 4 years so i know the kind of scary statistics that confront me every time i stand there the, the trucks move in cavalcades totally with the connivance of the police how come the traffic stops when i go there the only time the trafficking stops is when i stand there physically blocking the smugglers and single handedly i would have prevented the movement of at least 10 lakh cattle in 4 years the statistics of cattle smuggling here are scary at least 5000 animals are trafficked daily through these routes the highway patrol police largely facilitate the crime mero go mat ne jaate betan re babu the local people watch it helplessly guruwar ka din hai na ye janwar jata hai idhar manapuram bol ke hai yahan se nearly 40 km dur mein wahan par market hota hai har shinwar तो पैदल लेके जाता है लोग ले इपड़ी इपड़ी तीस के तुना रहा किंदक तीस के तुना रहा अभी कामे लग तीस के तरह हां लगा लग भी बेच देते हैं थोड़ा दो चार बार बच्चा दे दिया डाल दिया और थोड़ा बुड्ढी हो गए तो उनको बेच देते हैं दो चार हजार में सब पैदल चला चला के लेके जाता है किस लिए जाते हैं बेचने बेचने के लिए ले जाता है देयर आर नो चेक पोस्ट टू टैकल दिस क्राइम फ्रॉम स्टॉपिंग द इलीगल मूवमेंट ऑफ ट्रक्स एंड कंटेनर्स 
to filing the FIRs and ensuring safe transportation of seized animals to proper shelters, everything is largely done by cattle rescuers, as the police usually wash their hands off. Can homelessness for human beings become a pretext for eliminating vast uh, sections of the human population? Ditto for uh, uh, cattle. Okay, if you think you have no shelter, then create them. But you ca can't look um, away from the crime simply on the grounds that there are no shelters. Even if you cash the cattle, where are you going to keep them? It's not my job to keep them. Policing is not my job. Okay, sh sheltering is not my job. We are at, at the NGO level. Gaugyan Foundation is doing its level best. And we are helping them at all levels. But what about the role and responsibility of the official machinery. The study of the crime patterns done by Gaugyan Foundation describes the modus operandi of the cattle mafia, the negative role of the police and the importance of setting up a national task force to check the crimes against cattle. It was submitted to the Home Ministry subcommittee by the chairman of the Gujarat Gauseva and Gaucher Vikas Board, Dr. Vallabhai Kathiria, on April 22, 2015. It suggested that cattle smuggling from India to Bangladesh via the West Bengal border is a very serious crime and is closely tied to national security. The report underlined that the cattle mafia is one of the most organized criminal networks in the country. The cattle mafia has links with national and international terrorist outfits and naxals. The smugglers have a free run of the scores of state and national highways day and night. 90% of cattle reach the India-Bangladesh border in trucks and containers. Cattle smuggled from the West Bengal border are brought from all over the country. Jharkhand and Odisha borders are the main supply lines to West Bengal. The cattle markets are a major front for the cattle mafia. Most of them are illegal. 99% of them can be shut down going by the rules. The market survivors issue receipts of sale and purchase to fake traders. Sleeping partners in the crime include farmers, agro-produce marketing bodies, municipal authorities. Active partners in the crime are cattle traders, market operators, transporters, drivers, helpers, labourers, toll gate staff, among others. The money stakes in this illegal trade are stupendously high. Each cattle generates at least 30,000 to 125,000 rupees, depending on size, breed and the season. It translates into trillions of rupees of illegal money used for drugs, arms, fake currency rackets and terrorist activities. The terrible cruelty inflicted on the cattle in transit and upon arrival in Bangladesh is in clear violation of the laws and rules, including the Indian Customs Act of 1962, the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960, Transport of Animals Rules 1978, amended in 2001, State Acts for the Prevention of the Slaughter of Cow and its Progeny, Transport of Animals Rules 2001, Section 194 of the Motor Vehicles Act 1998, pertaining to punishment for overloading, and sections of Indian Penal Code relating to forgery, cheating, as well as maiming and killing of animals. State and national highways are bustling with cattle smuggling, both vehicular and that on foot, before they reach the Bangladesh border. The last 20 years, security agencies, both government and non-government, have been warning the administration about the cattle mafia's links with anti-India forces. Former chairman of the Animal Welfare Board of India under the Ministry of Environment and Forests, Major General Dr. R. M. Kharb, in several written communications to the government, has highlighted the cattle mafia's close links with the terrorists. A lot of militants, they are involved from both the sides. It is done by Jamate ul Mujahid of Bangladesh, which is a tentacle organization of Al Qaeda of Indian subcontinent and ISIS. And this payment in FICN and drugs, they come in lieu of cattle going to Bangladesh to India. And this is being paid to the sleeper cells of JUMB and laskar e and AQIS and ISIS for their anti-national activities in India. It is proved already. The cattle mafia is one of the most organized criminal networks in the country, which has very 
uh, serious repercussions for national security. But the, neither the Odisha government nor the Odisha police are ready to look at the, that dimension of the crime. If you can smuggle cow, such a big thing, and that not in the, that in hundreds and thousands, so it is very easy for the terrorist or for such anti national elements to uh, smuggle into weapons and explosives. Given the gravity of crimes against the cow and the cattle mafia's links with terrorist outfits, animal welfare groups like the Gaugyan Foundation have petitioned the government to set up a cattle protection task force on the lines of a counter terrorism force. It is high time that we should stop it. You can see now. All these FICN which is coming out in Malda, they are all coming from Pakistan through Bangladesh. No state government, no central government can afford to take this crime lightly unless, of course, you know, the state government has stakes in allowing this crime. In my view, the Odisha state government and certainly its police, they have huge stakes in permitting this crime. They are patrons of this crime. Various bodies have suggested the measures to control the crime. They include the setting up of a central cattle protection task force, better policing and strict implementation of the laws, breaking the cattle mafia police nexus, choking the cattle supply lines to West Bengal, shutting down of illegal cattle markets, bringing to book the illegal cattle traders and impounding of smuggler trucks and containers. The laws about animal welfare are clearly laid down. Perhaps the only thing that is needed to control the crime is the administrative will.